Oh, hello, everyone. Oh, good morning. It is too early. Too, too early. Welcome to the first, best, and only morning show ever. I'm Anthony Carboni. I'm Sage Ryan. And it's about 8.16 a.m. here where we are. It should be about 8.16 a.m. where you are. Uh, so just go ahead and double check. I don't know what you're talking that. about. It's exactly 8 a.m. where I am, and we started on time. There is a bit of a temporal distortion between sides of the table, mm -hmm. and yeah. I forget to take that into account. Of course. I also, I did something very nice for you today. What did you do? I muted our alert box. <laughs> <laughs> I did it just for you. <laughs> hey, thanks. You'll still be able to hear the alerts at, hu at home, won't they? Or is that muted for them as well? Honestly, I'm not sure. You know, it pops up on the screen. You see your name. Here's That's the enough. Thing. Here's the thing. When you're the first and only morning show in existence, there's stuff that you're going to come across that other people haven't come across. Who would have known that alert sounds could pop up in the middle of a stream? So true. Nobody, nobody would have known. There's a lot of news today. There's some news today. There's some news today. There's definitely at least some news today. There's some news today. I can promise that. Cyberpunk players are getting refunds for a broken game, um, particularly on PS4 and Xbox One consoles, last gen consoles, where uh, the game is a little buggy and weird. It looks like you're playing a PlayStation 1 game on a PS4. Do you know what it looks like to me when you're playing Cyberpunk on a PS4? It looks like when Law & Order would have an episode about video games. Yeah, what they thought video games looked and like. And they'd have a kid playing a fake video game that some uh -huh. 3D animator over at Law & Order thought was a video game. It looks like those cursed Steam games that you get for 99 cents. <laughs> Uh, but no, they didn't get it for 99 cents. They play, They paid $60 for it. Uh, PlayStation is giving me the rare, blessed PlayStation refunds with no questions asked. That's not an easy thing on PlayStation. That's how much they understand that this game sucks to play on PS4. Yeah, so, you know, uh, it's a little broken. It's Target a little broken. platform, let's go ahead and say it. Target platforms were PC and Xbox Series X. And mm -hmm. anything else might be a little broken. Yep. Might be a little broken. Might be a smidge broken. It didn't stop them from having a massive launch, though. Let me disable, let me disable my ad blocker. Hey, I'm just PC kidding. Gamer, why do you always show feet? I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, they always show feet. It, right there. It's always right Geralt's there. feet. I hate it. And also, one day we're going to get in trouble for it. That's against TOS. Um, so, WoW Shadowlands, like we reported on Friday, was the biggest PC launch in history. And then Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk happened. happened. Biggest PC launch in history. History. Uh, can you imagine how mad Blizzard is right now? So mad. Like everybody in the office was like, oh my God. Oh my God, we're the biggest launch in history. This is incredible. We, we broke like in history. Yeah. Not not a, not this month. And you know who year. had it before? In history. Us. Right. We've done it twice. Right. No one can take this from us. This is like Cameron watching Avengers Endgame happen. You know, and then James Cameron put that really, that really like lovely note in Variety where he was just like, oh, congratulations, Avengers, for beating Titanic. That's so oh. fun. And then he privately went, he privately got into a secret submarine laboratory mm -hmm. that James Cameron has. Of course. With James all of his has. IMAX cameras. And he was mm -hmm. like, oh, get them. Mm -hmm. Avatar 2 will release and it will be the biggest movie of all times. And then he paid someone to hug him. Yeah. True story. True story. Uh, so yeah, it, uh, the game was pre-ordered by 8 million people in total. 59 people. I was one of those people. 4.72 million of those copies were on PC. Beating <laughs> WoW Shadowlands by just a few hundred thousand copies. Oh, just a few hundred thousand. Just a few hundred thousand. Harry Horror Show in, in chat said, I'll film my revenge in IMAX. Yeah, from his submarine. <laughs> Damn, James Cameron. You're a pretty cool supervillain, and yeah. your movies are pretty fine. Yep. Uh, and because of how, don't worry about the bugginess, worry about how big the launch day was, because Cyberpunk 2077 developers will be getting paid their bonuses regardless of how the game does, which I think is good. 
it is a good thing. We want the creatives who worked very hard on something to get paid. And originally their bonuses were going to be built on a structure that was based on the rating they got on Metacritic. Which is very common in AAA gaming and sucks. Oh, so bad. It, because it's not the fault of some guy whose job is to texture garbage bags in Night City to make sure the game gets a 90 on Metacritic. It was based on getting 90% at the time of writing it. Uh, and that was the only way they were gonna get their bonuses. And then they were like, okay, biggest game in history, fine. You can have your bonus. Yeah, and it did uh, eventually hit that Metacritic of 90, but we, but, but, a but, a but. We want to talk about how CD Projekt Red gives out those bonuses. Because here's the way it worked. Number one, everybody crunch six days a week. Terrible. Number two, only the employees that were deemed to crunch the best were able to get bonuses. Do you know how they were able to get bonuses? They got a token. The crunchiest employees. The crunchiest We're given employee. a little red token. The, cr the, 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 the banana nut clusteriest of employees that had the biggest crunch and the sharpest bite mm -hmm. uh, sure. were, were given a token with the CD Projekt Red logo on it and told, hey, when all this is over, if we get over a 90 on Metacricket, Critic, Cricket, Metacricket. Ah. I can't make a cricket noise clearly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> If we get over a 90 on Metacritic, you can turn in that little token of yours mm -hmm. and we'll give you some money. We can have some we money. We don't know how much money. We'll figure it we'll out. We'll see, but for now Ooh, you can Grumpy have a Steam token. Steam gave us a bonus. That's Dang. our holiday bonus. One Don't cent. spend it all in one place. Thank okay. you. Don't forget, Twitch still takes a part of that. It's not one whole cent for us. Ooh. Twitch now still takes a portion of it. We, di we divide it up like Bitcoin, but valueless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so listen, this is good because employees got bonuses mm -hmm. and they should have yes. for how hard they worked. It's bad because number one, there shouldn't have been any fucking crunch in the first place. Should not have been any crunch. If you're gonna crunch that hard and have your game come out that broken, why don't you let everybody go home and put out another patch? You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, and then number two, don't give me an obnoxious fucking skee ball ticket to yeah, tell me I was a good boy. Yeah, what kind of cheese bullshit? is giving a token that you can redeem for special prizes. Bullshit. Nah, Bullshit. I don't think so. They, that's very strange and like, it feels like they hand them the token and they pat them on the head when they do it and then they like walk away back into their massive office yeah. out of the basement that they keep the devs in. Listen, Cyberpunk is a game and it's fiction, but it's real. And that's maybe one of the reasons why I'm enjoying Cyberpunk a little less than I thought I would. The other reason is it's, bu it's buggy, and it's just, it's kind of just Skyrim. And transphobic. And transphobic. Um, anyway, there are some good things that are going on. Absolutely. Uh, whoever's writing the little lore, the little data bits, there's so many data bits in an open world game like this, is having a little bit of fun. I, uh, Laura Palmer's in the game. You can find Laura Palmer oh, from fun. Twin Peaks. Uh, Hideo Kojima is sitting around in a bar having yeah. drinks. Uh, but this is when you scan uh, one of the thugs. It says he's wanted for illegal use of pineapple or pineapple adjacent products as part of the Pizza Desecration Act. That's fun. That's fun. That's fun. You know when it's not fun? When it's on someone's dating profile. No, when that's a serious thing that people think is part of their personality. Yeah. That's bad. When it's a fun little joke in cyberpunk. I love it. I, I love it for cyberpunk. I also don't like it when it becomes like once every year when it becomes like a big thing on my Twitter timeline. Mm -hmm. where, where it's like, like an actual debate. Yeah, where it's like now we're going to get very serious, but not right. but we are about yeah. whether pineapple belongs on pizza. And I understand it's a fun, we can have a debate within a safe space and that's fun. Sure. But I just, I, boy, I but, get the bit. I see, get the bit. Cyberpunk can also have men holding fish. Dating profiles can't have that either. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that are acceptable for cyberpunk that are not acceptable to put on your dating profile, including your, dip, your dick clipping through your pants. Or a fish. Or a fish. So, a lesson. What if they're, uh, what if they work at SeaWorld? Still shouldn't hold a fish. 
That's true. I guess they wouldn't. You can pose with a fish. You'd be like, this is the fish. Right, here is the fish. And if you work at SeaWorld, if, if that's kind of cool. If it's hanging, that's not okay. Hanging, it, not if okay. It's swimming. Holding, not okay. Uh, in, in a tank, love it. Dolphin jumping out of the water. In a tank okay. in your home. <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> All right, kind of funny. If you're just like posing next to your beta fish, I'm down. No, but like a big aquarium at home, like one of those big tropical fish people. Oh, never mind. I'm back out. All right. Now we know. The tropical fish people just felt a little weird. Tropical fish people are a little weird. I knew a guy who had... Uh, no, keep the cyberpunk up for this. Uh, I knew a guy who had... <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I knew a guy, uh, I met a guy, didn't know him very well, in Brooklyn okay. when I was living there, who uh, wound up like hanging out at a bar with him and like some of my friends, and we all went back to his place, which was near the bar, mm -hmm. and it was in kind of like one of those neighborhoods that's like on the edge of everything, so you can get like a big space. And he's like, I got a big space, like we, we come back to my place, so we can all hang out. We're like, yeah, sure, let's go hang out, buddy. So we go hang out, and we find out the entire reason he has a big space is he's got a giant fish tank. Like the dude doesn't, like he has a couch, but barely, but what he's got is a giant aquarium that's like controlled by his phone. This is in 2010, controlled by his phone. And he's like, oh yeah, like it's got a salinator and you've got to worry about all this and like temperature. And I'm like, this is your life. He's like, this is my life. See, that's the reason is because like having tropical fish means that's your life. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. It takes a village to raise a clownfish. It does. And that's, and anyway, that's what we have to say about Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, big business news. There's actually one more thing happening in Cyberpunk, and I think we didn't end up putting it in there, but in people that you can find in the game, there is an NPC that is following No, it is around. here. I apologize. You're right. I really do want to talk about it before we move on. It's a clingy, uh, and that's not even the picture of them for some reason. That's a different NPC that PC Gamer decided to put as their image for That's this. the, uh, that's the Corpo agent that you wrote yeah. to in the beginning. So, however, there is an NPC that is just following people around and you can like, you know, go back to a previous spawn point and something to get rid of him and then he just comes on back. He yeah. just like walks back up and he's, he's a normal ass dude. He he just follows you around. He has the little, he has the little four, four diamonds. There he is. There he is. There he is. This man. is some creepypasta stuff and yeah, I love right? it. Uh, it has the little um, four diamond symbol that it has for, uh, for basically an escort or an important character. Yeah. And he just pops up. Like, you can fast travel to another neighborhood and then you'll just turn around and, and he'll be there. And he's following you. I love it. There was, I, I did a side mission where you had to go into a Maelstrom stronghold, right? You had to hack your way in. You had to sneak in through the back. If anybody saw you, you had to go in through the cameras. Like it was impossible to get in there. Impossible to get in Impenetrable. there. Impenetrable. Impenetrable fortress mission. And at one point I'm ducking because they almost saw me and I turn around and there's just this, this big dude, this big dude who's just walking back and forth wearing a tank top, looks like a tourist. He's just got a surprised look on his face and he's just walking around like, huh. And he's just walking back and forth on a path. And I'm just like, hey, my guy, they're gonna see us. They're gonna, do you wanna duck? I named him Barry. And every time I would like try to do something in the mission and it wouldn't work and I'd come back, I'd be like, Barry, I think this is, I think, I think we're in trouble here. And he's just walking back and forth. Walking back and forth. This game was definitely ready. This game was ready and just give everybody their bonuses and don't make them beg for tokens. Okay? How many tokens? PS5 had the biggest console launch month in US history. Yeah. It is now the biggest launch console ever in the history of America and American video games. A record that was previously set by the PS4. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, it's funny because this console launch has felt so different than previous console launches because like most of my friends don't have it. Yeah, not just that, but like the, the height the hype has been weird because all hype is now abstracted and mm -hmm. only 
seen on screens. Yeah. And in the so like That's you can't true. go out into the world and be like, there's a big crowd at GameStop and That's we all true. got a you know, we all got a PS5, Best Buy, people were waiting like Yeah. yeah. You know, they're they're they aren't doing as many press events or like big launch events or like road tours or anything like that, because they can't. Right, and typically, especially in the holiday season, you would be running around the mall to go and get some kind of holiday gift for somebody, and you would see the line down the entire aisle from GameStop. Like, yeah. Those are all of the things that you know of like console launch season uh, that didn't happen. And again, yes, that is Ghost meowing in the background. I didn't know if you could hear it, but uh, that is him just sobbing well, out there. Well, Ghost wants us to point out that while it is the largest console launch month in history, uh -huh. the Switch, is still the biggest selling console this month. Not a launch month, yeah, but it is, and has been for the past three months, record sales for consoles for the Switch. Ghost is right. Ghost is maybe the best business analyst in this apartment, and that is not a joke. He has a lot of opinions on it. He has a lot it. of opinions on this. He says, you can't silence me. Yeah, <laughs> the numbers don't lie. Right, and that's fair. He may want to make sure we talked about the Switch. Uh, I've been enjoying my, I've been enjoying my PS5. I like it. I mean, the, the, the thing right now is uh, we are in launch, and even though I get swept up in the hype every generation, something I forget is um, it takes a little while for the games to catch up. Yes. So, you know, you play your, you play your Miles Morales. Uh-huh. You know? Maybe you're, a, maybe you're a COD, a CODsman. Yeah. Sure. If you're a CODsman, don't put it on your dating profile. No, thank you, please. No you COD on your dating Don't hold the COD. Also, but also don't say you play Call of Duty. Yeah, don't tell don't tell people that you got the double XP Doritos on your You know what? Or do. Here's what I'm gonna say. Definitely be yourself on your dating profile. Yeah. You, you should definitely be yourself on your dating profile. We're just saying like How much of yourself is that fish? <laughs> you codsman. Um and as much as I love playing old games that I've played before, but upscaled or at 60 frames a second or whatever, like I've, I've, I've played them. I was- You did it. I did it. So, you, you know, you, you, Q, Q2 of a, of a new console is really where things start picking up. Yeah. And uh, it's always like this. There's it's a always little, like that. There's a little dead zone there's after a, a couple of launch titles that you play when you get it. Uh, so I felt about the Switch for a long time. Oh, this, yeah, the Switch, the Switch was had like a big dry patch. It was a Breath of the Wild machine for a full like four or five months, I think. Yep, that was rough. Well, that's not true. I think we all put 140 hours into snipper clips. What? Speaking of the PlayStation 5, interesting design, the PlayStation 5. It is an interesting design. Looks like a looks like a beautiful, environmentally conscious building. Of course, absolutely. Looks like the Sydney Opera House. Uh-huh. A large tower. Looks like a looks like where perhaps the villains lived in Divergent. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever seen Divergent. No, but yes. But I'm gonna say that they lived in a big PS5. Does that make sense? Honestly, on its side, it could definitely be some sort of Sith transportation. Yeah. It looks like Padme's ship. <laughs> it looks like it's from Naboo. <laughs> it's definitely something, it, it's a piece of technology from Naboo or from Coruscant. Right, yeah, um, it's just Amidala's weird shiny plane. So, but... <laughs> The thing is, it's been hard for people to know what the PS5 is supposed to be do. Do a, you know? You put it vertical. Of course. That's how they want you to do it. Yes, but that a lot of people don't have room for that. But we don't have room for that. Don't so if you want to put it on, on your TV stand or on any human furniture uh -huh. that humans own, yeah, you, you have to put turn it, on its, it on its side. So this is a picture from the head of PlayStation Studios, Herman Holst. Herman is a wonderful person. We love Herman. Uh, and this is his cat attacking the bug snack screen. It's very cute. What a cute picture what, of him very to cute. share. We love that he's playing bug snacks. We love a cat. What's that? We love that vibrant HDR. The cat doesn't know if it's a real dragonfly or not. Okay. Cute picture. Can you can you figure out what is wrong with the head of PlayStation Studio, Herman Hulst's PlayStation 5? Uh-oh. Herman? Um. Herman. Herman. That's not supposed to be. The, Herman. The disk drive. The disk drive go on, on the, the bottom. bottom. Herman. It even comes with a little, you get a little stand. You get a little stand. Herman, I don't know if you know this, but when you get a PlayStation <laughs> 5, 
uh, there's a, a, a sheet of quick uh, quick start instructions that lets you know exactly how to use that that mounting disc because it does curve in on both sides. Uh huh. So you need a mounting pad, <laughs> uh, and it does tell you how to do that. Herman, Pulsed, head of PlayStation Studios. It's a good design. It's a good design. <laughs> Completely upside down. Hey, Her bud. Hermie, baby. Come on, you're supposed to know this. Booby. Of all people. Buddy. Hey, if I posted a photo and it was on the wrong side, fair. I'm not the head of PlayStation Studios. Not yet. I'm coming for you, Herman. She's very good at business and she's a lawyer in the state of Virginia. That's all they require. To be the head of PlayStation Studios, yeah. you just have to be a lawyer in the state of Virginia? And good at big business. Oh, I am good at big business. Jesus, but you do have to have both of those things specifically. Okay. I would love to talk about this weird thing. Uh, Super Mario Manga Mania is something that has existed, but had never previously been released in English. And uh, as of, what is the date on that release? I think it's, is it out now? December 11th, uh, it was released on December 8th. You can get it in English and you can read the Super Mario Manga. So, it, it exists. The Super Mario manga has been in Japan since the 80s. It mm -hmm. is also, it's also been fan translated multiple times before. It's very fun and very weird and, and very strange and surreal. It definitely comes from a time when like we were like, the lore and tone and style of Mario was still very up in the air. Auntie Boo makes me very uncomfortable. Auntie Boo makes you very uncomfortable. Not into it. Merry Christmas Yoshi. Like there's a lot of really weird stuff. In the original one, like Mario was like literally playing Nintendo and Bowser comes out of the TV. Mm -hmm. Like it's very strange and fun. Um, and it's available now in America, but here's the thing. The Mario comics are not the weirdest Nintendo comics that have ever existed. No, absolutely not. Mario did a run of five different comic series uh, they were all in English. They released in America. Yeah, here in the States. And, in and the 90s, I believe, late 80s, early 90s. So Valiant had the rights in the 90s to Nintendo Comics, and they mm -hmm. called it the Nintendo Comics System. And They thought they were doing something there. They were starting with five, and they were like, we're going to be a whole comic system. It's the comic system, and the, uh, the five titles were uh, <laughs> so many tabs. So many tabs. Uh, they had... It was uh, Super Mario Brothers, mm -hmm. Game Nin Boy, Captain N, the mm -hmm. Game Master, mm -hmm. The Legend of Zelda, uh, Game Boy, mm -hmm. and the Nintendo Comics system itself. Yeah, which was just a which was collection. short comics. It was kind of like the Archie Double Digest you get. Yeah. Um, my favorite of these is Game Boy. Now, I had never read one of these. It was definitely before my time. However, I did fall down an absolute rabbit hole of these last night and the pieces that you can find of them on the internet because the Game Boy comics are an absolute fever dream. I actually loved these because they were so weird and of strange. Course. The Game Boy comics are set in the real world and each issue follows a different character and when that character gets into some sort of trouble in their lives, Mario gets summoned out of the Game Boy with a secret code and will help you with your problems. He's oh, very nice tiny. Mario. He's very tiny. Tiny Mario. We'll fix it. And uh, it's, it's fucking nuts. <laughs> it's absolutely bananas, genuinely. Uh, the first one was about uh, a kid who works for a jerk? Mm -hmm. uh, just a just a horrible old man at a mall. Yeah, and uh, steals a Game Boy from his employer, shoplifts a Game Boy, and releases Mario from the Game Boy on accident. Oh my! Is this the same one with the guy that punches a cop, or is that a different one? The same one. This boy is in trouble, and Mario comes out of the Game Boy to tell this boy, "Hey, Paisan, mm -hmm. Garbaggio. Garbaggio. What you're doing is Don't Garbaggio." Do the first panel is this man coming into work, mm -hmm. and he approaches, like on his way, he gets stopped by police for some reason. Yeah. And then he punches a cop, and then he goes to work, and he's like. I'm taking one of these Game Boys. It's mine because I deserve it for working so hard. Yeah. Here we go. So this is the man. 
pushes his way through the crowd, punches a cop. Okay, open the gateway. So he, in, in this issue, and here's the thing, this is dark and weird because this guy is supposed to be like like this dark, obsessed dude mm -hmm. who is trying to release Lord Tatanga from the Game Boy. Yes. Because he thinks the dark Lord Tatanga will give him wishes and stuff. I love it. Do they have the next panel to that? Yeah, down here. He said, if I had it my way, every litter bug, jaywalker, mugger, and liberal politician would be strung up. Woo! Okay, Nintendo. Uh, we're making moves here. Uh, there are a lot of, there were four or five issues of the Game Boy comic. And my favorite one, we actually don't have the cover of it. This is one where Mario uh, helps save uh, a space shuttle. Yes. Mario comes out of the Game Boy because an astronaut needs him and he helps save a space shuttle, but it's hard because he can't breathe in a space. What's up with his hands? The, oh, that's Mario in an empty space suit. Oh, it's empty. Yeah, that's a little Mario in an empty space suit. big space suit. You think it's Mario being reflected in the space suit like the astronaut is seeing it, but that's an Mario. empty space suit <laughs> where Mario is trying to breathe in space. Excellent. Now, my favorite one is about a, a little boy whose mother works in a nuclear power plant. And he sees on the news that the nuclear power plant is going through, uh, is going through, I don't think I have this. Oh, I definitely saw it. Yeah, I saw it. I don't, I, I just don't have it. All right. Um, he thinks, he thinks it's going through, uh, he, he sees on the news that there's a meltdown happening at the power plant. And so he releases Mario from the Game Boy to go fix a nuclear power plant. And Mario does it but he kind of succumbs to radiation sickness. Also, Tatanga is there and trying to get the nuclear power plant to melt down faster. Yeah, didn't, did, did, did Tatanga then start the nuclear meltdown? I is don't that... know if Tatanga started. I have a, I have a fuzzy memory of events. Huh. Uh, but anyway, they're very good. The Game Boy, it's, it's Valiant Comics as heck. It is mm -hmm. late 80s, early 90s as heck. It is high concept and weird and yeah. strange. And all of them were strange. And I love it. Yeah, all of them were strange. Captain N, of course, based on the cartoon. Sage has never seen Captain N the game. I have Master. never seen Captain N. You know, we have a Patreon. And every week we do a little something extra for the kids on the Patreon if you support the channel. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to show Sage an episode of Captain N the Game Master on the Patreon and just see what she thinks of that officially licensed Nintendo cartoon. Because, wow. All right. Wow. All right, I'm in. Yeah. Sure, that's what we'll do on the Patreon this week. That'll be your It's Too Early bonus clip. Uh, I'll react to Captain N cartoon. Sure. Yeah, we'll do it. And yes, and it will eventually get uploaded. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, Mario Manga's out. It's nine bucks. It's nine bucks. Go pick and it up. it's a collection. It's like a, a decent size. It's so. fun. Hey. It's fun. Comics are fun. Yeah, and I also looked into, I was like, wow, I bet these very weird Nintendo comics are probably worth some kind of money now. Like it's been, you know, a long time and they're so off branding for Nintendo now. Like I bet they would be pretty hard to get. They're not, they're like 10 bucks on eBay. Except for we did find somebody asking, we didn't find what it sold for. Mm -hmm. We did find somebody asking $75 for the first issue of Legend of Zelda, which if, you, if you're a fan of The Legend of Zelda, but you don't know about the comic, I could see you being tricked into paying that much. Yeah. But it is based on the cartoon, which was part of the Captain N cartoon. Uh-huh. And it is based on the version of Link that goes, excuse me, princess. Best Link? Worst I don't know. Link. Could be Best Link. I'm already uncomfortable. I can't wait to watch. <laughs> That's the news for today, everybody. Yeah, we had some stories to go over. Thanks for hanging out and starting your morning with us. We appreciate it. We absolutely appreciate it. We appreciate all of you coming in. We know it's very early. Very Too early. early, some might say. Some might, but we do this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So get up with us, hang out, start your day with a little bit of gaming news. That's right. Hey, 
in that Patreon, in that Discord, mm -hmm. uh, we've been asking you if you see stories that you think we should cover on the show, to certainly put them in the It's Too Early channel, but also put channels that you think we should raid that are up early in the morning. Maybe you, maybe you stream directly after this show. Yeah. You want us to raid you. We want to support you, you little pickles. Sweet little things. She almost said it. No, I didn't. She came very close No, that's a Christmas it. tradition. Full circle, everybody. We'll see you Wednesday. Bye. Bye, y'all.